Well, today we're going to take a look at Mermaid Adventures Revise, a family friendly setting book for the PIP System Core Book. One note before we start, we were provided with a review copy of this source book from Third Eye Games. Uh, it's also worth noting, like many of the read, uh, re RPG reviews we've done lately due in the time of pandemic, this is a read review. I have sat down, read the source book, but sadly haven't had a chance to get it to the table yet. Now, this one is something I can play with my kids. So I am hoping to get it to the table soon. So look forward to an actual play report and an actual play review sometime in the future. Now, finally note, this is a review of Mermaid Adventures Revised which matters. This is not the original Mermaid Adventures RPG. The original Mermaid Adventures is the RPG I chose to introduce my girls to uh, and first their first role-playing experience. And you can check out my review of that edition on the blog or back to podcast episode 94, Black Lives Matter, where we featured Aloy LaSanta. Now, at times during this review, I am going to be comparing the two different versions because they are significantly different in a number of ways. So during the, during, due to this being an RPG review, we won't be pointing you towards an unboxing video today. No, but what I can tell you is that uh, the production quality of the book was pretty solid. Um, the version I have is the color soft cover edition. As far as I know, it only comes in color. Uh, you can also get it in PDF format. Uh, the version I have is a digest size paperback book that clocks in at 100 pages long, which includes a table of contents, a character sheet, and an index. The other thing to note, though, that is, I think, very important is this is not a complete game. This is not a game on its own. It is not playable standalone. The PIP system core book is required to use this book. Now, this is a notable change from the original, which was standalone and, while not expensive, it's important to know that you will need an additional purchase in order to play your new mermaid game. Now, similar to the PIP system core book, Mermaid Adventures is full color, features a lot of excellent diverse artwork, including all kinds of merfolk and potential adversaries. If you think all merfolk are half fish, half person, you need to check this book out. There are some really interesting ideas here. Uh, the font is larger than normal, kind you'd expect in like a kid's book or a young adult book, uh, which is nice. I appreciate that. Um, it also features a two-column layout, uh, basically the same layout as the PIS system core book we talked about last week. What's interesting is this is a complete divergence from the original book. Uh, the original book, single-column layout with much smaller font, which is kind of interesting to see. I got to say, I prefer this new layout. It's easier on the eyes and easier to read, and it just lays out and flows better. Overall, I found the book to be well-written, pretty easy to read, nice and clear. I didn't find anything confusing or out of place. Uh, my first read-through, I, I will admit, took a couple of days to get through, but I could have easily just powered through it in a single afternoon. So readability is an important factor for both kids and parents in relation to this game. Yeah, my daughter borrowed this one off me and read through it and managed to fit it and finish it in one morning, so it definitely can be done. Uh, the book is broken into six chapters, uh, again, using the new PIP system rules. Uh, so six chapters using for, for the PIP system, and then there are five short sample adventures at the end of the book. Now, this is a source book for the PIP system core book, so you don't get anything like uh, what is role-playing, how to plan a session, or any of that stuff. You also don't get any rules, like the actual mechanics. The rules are not repeated here at all. So the PIP system is not explained. You're not going to, it doesn't walk you through how to make a character. It just presents the new options. It doesn't tell you how to build dice pools or how to read your white dice, or your black dice, or any of that stuff. So again, this is a huge change from the original edition, which was a standalone book with everything you need to play. Which, you know, given the system's change, it makes sense. There's no point in wasting a reader's time duplicating content when it's built on that other book completely. Yep. Now, taking a quick walk through each chapter, um, first you get some setting information. You got the underwater city of Atlantis, its various peoples, who the rulers are, the denizens. Uh, they talk about the dark lands, which are outside of Atlantis. They talk about the slipstream, which is this quick way to move around underwater locations, but can be very dangerous. Um, What's neat to see here is there's actually more setting material here than was in the original Mermaid Adventures. Which you're, you're kind of hopeful for because, again, they have taken out all of those systems and rules mm -hmm. and dice pools and character creation. So you would hope that they'd take at least some of that room and, and add to uh, the, the story content. Yep, there is more story content as well as other stuff. 
like when we get to the new archetypes. So archetypes we talked about in the PIP system are your basically like your character class, right? So what you have here are types of merfolk. You've got eel folk, fish folk, jelly folk, lobster folk, octo folk, ray folk, seahorse folk, shark folk, turtle folk, and urchin folk. Now these use the PIP system rules where you have, uh, you know, your physical mental health, you get a set of starting skills, one and at two and two at one you get one unique ability and one hindrance so this is the same as all the archetypes in the other game now what I, again interestingly compared to the original there are two new types of mermaids here so i thought that was neat the seahorse folk and turtle folk did not exist in the original game again less system more room now, no new skills are added. Skills are your, like your strength dex con equivalents in this, uh, but there are a number of qualities, which are kind of like specializations. Uh, these are things that mostly make sense for an underwater fantasy setting, right? So you have like fast swimmer under athletics, uh, royalty under charm, because it's got a kind of medieval theme going on here, uh, human expert under knowledge, skill, and so on. There are also a number of new special qualities. Again, these are like special skills that are unique to characters. These include, again, setting specific stuff like Darklands Guide or the Atlantean Guard and Sense the Slipstream. Now, on the magic side of things, magic is optional in the original Pip rule book. It is required for this because magic is a big part of Mermaid Adventures. So they present two new magic traditions. Uh, there's the sea witch who can grant anyone any spell, but they have to give up something very important to them, which I think ties into a lot of sea witch fantasy we see in mermaid stories the world over. And the sorcerer. Uh, there's also a number of new spells. Uh, many of these, though, I think would have been useful in any PIP setting. So I think if you have the PIP system core book and you want some new spells, this might be worth picking up just for that. Like you've got stuff like beam, hypno eyes, which could work anywhere. But then you also have very mermaid adventure specific ones like fish form. Well, you know, it's nice that uh, because this is a generic system, you can then, you know, take these bits and pieces from your various uh, scenario books or, or your system books and backfill those into the PIP system elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah, the only problem you have is with something I'll, I'll, I'll highlight a bit more later is you've got multiple books, right? You get the D&D &D problem of what book was that in? Uh, there are a number of new random charts in this book, new versus the PIP system book, which I, I'm almost positive I didn't compare them chart for chart are a carryover from the original edition, which had a whole thing for rolling your eye color, your skin color, your friends, what type of fish you are, and so on. Uh, what was weird is it didn't specifically say if you roll these in addition to the charts in the PIP system book or instead of them. I'm thinking these replaced them because there was some rather odd stuff on those original charts, as we talked about in the other review. So I think it's a replacement, but it's still cool to see. You know, it sounds like the original charts could still be narratively fun, uh, but the ones in this supplement are probably more highly focused to avoid the Little Mermaid collector syndrome when your yes. characters, right? Everyone wants their bits and bobs because, that, you know, that, that's, that's what they ended up rolling. Very true. Uh, there is a group of sample characters uh this is a longer section than i would have expected like these are fully flushed out art background all the mechanics worked out all the skills um 10 total pre-made characters sitting there uh I, I i don't know this didn't exist at all in the original um in a way i guess it's good because this could get you started playing right right away or be good for like a one shot or a con game yeah so i love this because with 10 characters you can get younger players in right away and have them play multiple games with different characters True. before you have to worry about teaching them the character creation portion portion uh you're not going to get the 10 uh you know 10 characters in one game for a no. you know beginner kids game but if you've got two or three kids that means you've got three or four games mm -hmm. to break in the rest of the system before you have to worry about character development yeah, very fair, very fair. Uh, then we get to the extras chapter. Uh, no new gear, which is a little surprising to me, but a whole bunch of uh, themed adversaries for the Navigator. Uh, that's what they call the game guide in this, um, to throw at the players. Um, you've got all the stuff you expect from mermaids, right? So you have fish and dolphins. you got pirates and bandits and uh, undead skeleton pirates. And, of course, there's a kraken and a sea dragon. Um 
I again I didn't compare one to one, but I have a feeling these are pretty much the same list as the adversary risk in the core book, uh, with of course all full rules for the core system, the PIP system rules, which are significantly more advanced for for NPCs for extras. Like every single one of them has three special abilities unique to that monster, and they have different styles of hit points and everything. So basically, I think they took the original list and just updated it. Now. As for game guide advice, again, called The Navigator, there's not a lot here. Uh, just a couple paragraphs basically explaining, look, it's mermaids. You're underwater. It's fantasy. Think Disney. Don't think reality. Uh, don't argue about, like, when you talk underwater, all that would happen is bubbles. Like, underwater fires can be a thing, right? So I thought that was cool. More useful, though, is here are another bunch of charts. Uh, a significant number, six of them. So you roll a D6, see which chart, and then... 12 sorry 11 options on each because you roll 2d6 so 2 to 12 on every chart and these are just to spark adventure ideas in mermaid adventures and i like this a lot actually uh more than i would have thought like just hearing about it didn't sound that cool until i started reading them and like one of them is find a mystery potion all right cool and then you got your best friend wrecked the family chariot i'm like oh that's cool i would have never came up with that on my own or one of you is slowly becoming a mini Kraken. Find a way to stop this transformation before it's too late. And these are just like three of the things of this multiple charts. I thought this was really nice. Yeah, so this is really great concept for a busy parent or a new navigator just starting out. So they don't have to fumble around too much building and, and, and trying to figure out adventure ideas. They can just get started. Mm -hmm. And whether it's new players or old players, it's that if that if you're that new navigator you can get going and then if you are the new navigator just starting off and you, or you have no time to prep the game does end with five sample adventures now these i was hoping for new ones to be honest but these are identical uh the stories are identical to the original mermaid adventures but completely updated mechanically for the new pip system with all the detail you would expect with the pip system compared to the basic system now my complaint about these though is they are written Every step of these adventures is written as if the characters pass the rules with no help for the navigator if they fit. So, for example, it might say, roll a navigation roll to find the right way to go. And it's difficulty two black dice. And that's it. That's all it says. Well, well what if they fail? What if they don't? What, what happens? Do they lose time? Do they get lost? Do bad guys attack? Like, uh, now, this is nothing an experienced GM wouldn't be able to handle, but this is a game geared at young and new players. So I got to say, that seems like a bit of an omission. Like, just where's that... When things go wrong, paragraph. Yeah, that's definitely an odd exclusion considering how much help they've given elsewhere. Yeah. Now, overall, I don't know. I, I am I, on the fence. Isn't the, I don't know. I, I'm not sure what to think about that. So one thing I haven't mentioned, and when we talked about the PIP system core book last week, is that there's basically two sets of rules in that book. Now it's small, but you get the whole set of the rule book, and then the back of the book are these rules for playing with new players and playing for with kids that simplify all of the different skills down to only four skills and all qualities are just you have it or you don't and they provide one way tie it's a really dead simple system this entire book is the full hip rules nothing is in these lighter rules and i find that odd because the original mermaid adventures was the basis for those simple rules in the back of the pip system core book and it just seems like an odd choice to not present both or have this have still been the easy rules yeah well how difficult would it have been to dial down to the easier mode manually like so if you were an experienced gm um can you can you backtrack what they've done there to that easy mode you could do it but like when you get to the the extra section you'd have to be writing notes for every single one um, of the monsters right like you'd have to go okay here is their i forget there's 14 stats you like grab a highlighter or something and only highlight the four that matter. And then you'd have to decide like, okay, here's their list of seven special qualities. They're only allowed one now. What's one thing that sums up all of those? Like there, there's work right. required. Like it's not just a, a quick, simple, you only look at this part of the character sheet. Right. That might've been a good compromise. Perhaps if they had somehow a lawyer, or someone had gone in and provided that extra stat block, right? That extra role. So what this means is that Mermaid Adventures Revised is no longer aimed at really young players. Like, for example, I can't see using this book 
the way I used the original Mermaid Adventures. This is not a game I would have presented to my preschool children to get them into role playing. Now, on the other side, I think this book is much more interesting for older kids. And well, how many people are introducing the preschoolers to role playing? Most people are going to start their kids probably in their tweens and teens. And this to me seems great for tweens and teens. It's, it's much more interesting and mechanically interesting. And there's more to learn and there's more crunch. Plus, this is going to be a way better game for adults. If there are adults out there that want to play mermaids under the sea. And trust me, I know enough adult role players that would love playing in this setting. Yeah, well, I, there aren't, I don't doubt for a moment, just knowing people I do, that there are plenty of kids uh, with the ability to play the more complete system who enjoy the theme, as well as adults who would just absolutely dig jumping into this sort of a game. Uh, but that still leaves you with eliminating this youth market that seems yeah. like an obvious selling point of, that, that has now been missed. I just, I, I find it odd. Um, now, what I like even less, though, than this, uh, like the ramping up in difficulty, it, it's fine, right? Like I, your target market, how many people are playing with preschoolers? Like I said, I, I guess I get it. The thing that bothers me the most, so, is the fact this is not a standalone book. I would have much preferred a full, possibly shortened explanation of the PIP system to be in this book with full character creation rules, rules for gear, rules for weapons, rules for conflicts, all of that, in, in my opinion, should have been in this book. Now, I realize that would have made the book much thicker and obviously would have cost more, but I would much prefer that than having to flip between two books. Like having, even even just like having all the special qualities in one spot would be nice, or a summary, maybe even provide me a summary chart that says, here's all the special qualities, the ones from the core book and this book in one place, and reference a page, so at least I'm not fumbling between two books. I Maybe this is just me, but I would have much preferred a full core rule book. So car systems and supplemental books are hardly new or different no. uh, because of what this game had been, uh, you know, a beginner's easy kids friendly children's role playing game. It, it, it is an interesting shift in this particular yeah. game. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not trying to completely bash this book. This is a solidly written RPG supplement. It's got a very cool world. It's got a great family-friendly setting. It's got all the advantages of the PIP system, including the disadvantages. Like, I know Sean's not a big fan of the dice pool system. It's got everything we talked about that's good and bad about the PIP system we talked about before. It's better laid out. It has more artwork. It has more options. It's got some great new character classes. It is a great addition to the PIP system core book, I think. But I just, I think I preferred the original book for one, being an all in one book with rules and setting, but second, for having those dead simple rules, those rules geared towards brand new and young players. Like at this point, I wish what Aloy had done is kept both books in print, possibly renaming them so they didn't look the same. Like, like I don't know, call this Mermaid Adventures Advanced, which I know, Advanced D&D, &D, whatever, or call this Pip Core Mermaid Adventures or something yeah. or, or rename the other one mermaid adventures junior like i i just wish both options were still out there yeah no absolutely so for a more in-depth look at mermaid adventures revised you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews